Thank you. Um, William Dalrymple for the very warm and, and generous introduction, and I also want to uh, thank Ray New Judge and the Aesthetics Project, as well as uh, Kavita and Naman for their warm hospitality as well. It's an honor um, for me to uh, the Gandharan core area uh, with sites like Taktavahi and Sherry Below, which our previous speakers, uh, Dr. Kurt Barrett and uh, Professor Reed, talked about this morning. Artisans belonging to regional ateliers synthesized and transformed local Indian, Iranian, Central Asian, and Hellenistic visual elements and styles in Buddhist sculptures and architecture at Gandhrut. Visual media and newly emerging literary sources reflect Gandharan Buddhist efforts to establish and consolidate a Buddhist presence and to domesticate narratives in order to make what uh, Alfred Fouché, whose name hasn't yet been mentioned, uh, called a second Buddhist holy land. The stories played an important role in the establishment and transmission of Buddhist visual and literary cultures in Gandhara, Bactria, and Bamiyan. Many of these stories were selected with, uh, selected from an extensive pool or ocean of narratives about the present and past lives of the historical Buddha Shakyamuni, um, which circulated in oral, written, and in visual forms. So my presentation this afternoon focuses on our attention on Buddhist narratives in the art of Gandhara, where hagiographical scenes from Shakyamuni Buddha's lifetime are commonly depicted in distinctive sculptures from the early centuries of the Common Era. Now we've seen a couple of those narratives about scenes from Shakyamuni Buddha's present life or hagiography in the presentation uh, by Kurt Barrett. However, uh, what I'll be focusing on is a relatively small but nevertheless valuable corpus of about a dozen rebirth narratives. While I am uh, the coordinator of the project, I'm not trained as an art historian, which is an important caveat in speaking to this audience. My uh, collaborator, uh, David John Gavard, is affiliated with the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto, and he is actually a specialist in Gandharan art history, numismatics, and reliquary, uh, and he's the one who's supervising a, the survey of Gandharan Jatakas with the assistance of a team of Indian, Pakistani, and European scholars, including uh, Professor Shushmita Bashu Mujumdar of Calcutta University, uh, Dr. Abdul Samad, the Director of Archaeology and Museums in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Province of Pakistan, uh, Dr. Jesse Pons of Ruhr University Bochum in Germany, and uh, Mwana Porn Rienjung, a PhD student in archaeology at Cambridge, who uh, conducted field research in Indian museums uh, this past November for the project. The results I'm presenting today are not yet comprehensive since we just initiated this project uh, last summer. Um, but findings from David John Gavort's research in European archives and museums and the survey of Gandharan Jatakas in Indian museums conducted by K. Rienjung are already yielding some unexpected results, which I'll be sharing with the audience today. I'll also be discussing, as uh, uh, William Dalrymple mentioned, the early Buddhist written narratives from the perspective of recent discoveries within only the last two decades of significant collections of early Buddhist manuscripts, uh, which are fragments written on birch bark scrolls and palm leaves from the geographical, uh, chronological, and uh, cultural context of Gandhara and Bamiyan. These literary texts, written in the Karoshti script and Gandhari language, have opened new vistas on very early stages in the transmission of Buddhist genres. These genres uh, include well-known texts uh, composed in verses um, as well as prose, uh, but they also include summaries of narratives which are labeled as avadanas and purva yogas, um, which overlap to some extent with Jataka stories of the Buddha's previous births. So on this slide, I've given you the term avadana, okay, which um, in general means 
notable exploits are the tales about uh, notable people and their deeds, which do include what uh, my collaborator Timothy Lenz refers to as karmic tales, uh, which to say they relate how actions in the past uh, result in present circumstances, but the avadanas in the manuscripts do not conform to this standard pattern of Buddhist rebirth narratives in many cases. Purva yogas, on the other hand, uh, literally means something like previous yoga, or previous births, um, do link the past and present lives of characters in an explicit way, like we find in later um, literary and visual narratives of the Jatakas, uh, which tell the previous lives of the Buddha as well as other figures by linking the story of the past with the story of the present during the lifetime of Shakyamuni and oftentimes completing that with an identification. Okay. Now, in order to show you how these categories of Avadanas and Jatakas overlap, I've presented a couple of images uh, taken from the Bhutesa pillars, which are in the Indian Museum in Kolkata. So there on uh, your far right, you see this pillar with three images from the Simhala Avadana, which corresponds to the Valahasa <laughs> Uh, uh, Jataka in the Pali collection, okay. and basically it's the story about a um, merchant who's leading uh, a bunch of other uh, traders on a sea journey. They get shipwrecked. Uh, they're uh, uh, they're rescued by a horse, which in some versions is uh, identified with Avalokiteshvara, and those who stay behind are then consumed by the women of the island who turn into rakshasis and consume them. Now, uh, these are fascinating stories um, that have resonance um, beyond India, uh, also in uh, Sri Lanka, South, Southeast Asia, uh, Nepal, Tibet, and so forth. Um, and some of these are quite widespread, such as the story of King Shivi, who cuts off a piece of his own flesh from his thigh in order to save the life of a dove who is being pursued by a hawk. And basically, his flesh is being weighed against the uh, weight of the dove on this, by this figure who is holding a scale. And I'll also be talking about another Jataka, uh, either uh, called the Elephant Jataka, the Hustin Jataka, or the Indasamana Gota Jataka in Pali, in which um, uh, Devadatta, um, in a previous birth, and Devadatta is kind of an arch enemy of Shakyamuni Buddha, uh, he um, He's, he basically, in a previous birth, was a young elephant who was adopted by a sage. And this sage um, uh, treated the elephant uh, as his, like his own son. But when the sage criticized the elephant for breaking down his hut, the elephant rushed forward to attack and kill him and destroy the hut, too. So these are the kind of stories which are circulating. Um, around the Buddhist world of India, um, between Madhura, um, um, uh, Gandhara, as well as other sites um, uh, in, um, in, in, in India, in Central Asia, and Southeast Asia. Okay, so in terms of uh, what I'll do today is I'll share the progress of ongoing work on Gandhari Avadanas and Purva Yogas in the British Library Collection by Timothy Lenz, who's published two volumes of editions of these stories, of the Avadana and Purva Yoga stories, in the Gandharan Buddhist text series. Um, and we're presently collaborating on a third volume, with the uh, uh, which is going to complete the publication of the remaining Avadanas in the British Library Collection. The collaboration between Gandharan textualists and art historians aims to address differences in the uneven distribution, classification, and principles of selection of stories for representation in visual and written media by, rigid, by regional ateliers of Gandharan artisans um, and individual scribes. I hope to open up with questions about what might have made these stories appealing to regional audiences of lay and monastic patrons, uh, how narratives were localized in the religious landscape of the Northwestern frontiers, uh, far away from the homeland um, of the Buddhist tradition in ancient Magadha, now corresponding uh, to parts of Bihar, um, and um, 
uh, ways in which the visual imagery and the written versions facilitated transcultural processes of Buddhist expansion within and beyond Gandhara, Bactri, Bactria, and Bamiyan. So what I mean by transculturation is this process yeah, in which narratives move across cultures, right, from India to the northwestern frontier and beyond um, to Central Asia, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and so forth. Right? So some of the earliest Buddhist birth, previous birth stories depicted in stone pillar carvings surrounding stupas and shrines um, such as Barhut, like Barhut um, Bodh Gaya, basically between uh, Barhut and Nalanda, um, Sanchi, uh, Matura, um, as well as Ajanta, and here you see uh, the connection between Barhut, Sanchi, and Ajanta on this kind of main route of the uh, Dakshinapata, as well as Kanakanahali, some down here in Karnataka, um, uh, are labeled. And, and some of these stories, um, at least from Barhut and Kanakanahali, are labeled as Jatakas in Brahmi inscriptions. Okay. So um, here, what I need to point out is that uh, these terms, like Uttarapata, uh, northern route, and Dakshinapata, or southern route, are not necessarily routes or highways in the way we think of them today, but rather networks of arteries and capillaries which kind of fed into each other. But more often, these terms are used uh, to designate broad geographical and cultural regions of northern in the sense of Uttarapata and southern India in the case of Dakshinapata, but where these regions are actually located varies from the perspective of the literary and epigraphical sources. Okay, so let me show you a couple of slides of the images of the labeled Jatakas with Brahmi inscriptions uh, from Barut. Now at Barut, what we have are uh, a kind of an, is an exceptional case of many Jatakas uh, on these railing pillars, which once surrounded the stupa but are now in the Indian Museum in, in Calcutta, in which you not only have the image, but you also have um, an inscription um, in early Brahmi script uh, labeling, uh, these, in, la labeling these figures as Jatakas. So in this case, what we have is uh, the story of Amara Devi, the wife of a minister, who um, cleverly kind of tricks um, three opponents of her husband um, and basically places them in baskets uh, because they were trying to um, uh, basically torment, uh, torment her. What's interesting about this particular story is that rather than being labeled as uh, uh, the, as the Amara, uh, Amara Devi Jataka, or the Mahoshita Jataka, or the Maha Unmaga Jataka, which is basically where it's found in the Pali collection, it's within this larger collection of Jatakas, what you have is a quote of one of the verses um, from the Pali Jataka, uh, Pali Jataka version. Okay? Now, other Jatakas, like this, uh, like, like this uh, de uh, depiction of the Ruru Jataka, and basically the Ruru Jataka, you can kind of see it down here. What happens is that the um, deer, who's kind of the king of the deer, he's golden and so forth, he basically rescues somebody who's drowning. And then uh, he explains, the deer explains, the person he's just rescued, that you really shouldn't tell anybody that I'm here because they'll want my hide. But anyway, the queen, uh, the king wants She's heard about this golden deer, she wants it, so then the hunters come and, uh, and basically they, 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 they try to kill the deer, but then the deer uh, goes and um, uh, is brought to the town and explains to the king that he really shouldn't uh, be hunting him down, and uh, basically everything, is, everything works out fine. But this inscription basically is, is accompanied by a, a Brahmi, this, this image is accompanied by a Brahmi inscription, Mega Janaka, and uh, the inscription above that basically records uh, the gift of a pillar, Tavo for Stamba, um, of somebody named Posa, or Palshia, basically, the lunar month. And so, in addition to uh, 
uh, these examples. We also have other labeled Jatakas at Barut, which similarly show up in the Gandharan Jataka images, such as uh, this story of the sixth tusked elephant, um, the Rishi, Rishya Shringa Jataka, um, and, and also uh, uh, a Jataka about a Kindara. Okay, and I'll be talking about some of these stories a little bit later in my presentation. Now, in addition to Barhut, which most um, uh, scholars in art history and epigraphy would date to, say, late second century BCE, first century BC, um, we also have now labeled Jataka, labeled Jatakas at the site of Kanaganahali, okay, which has recently been excavated um, and has been published in the memoirs of the Archaeological Survey of India um, just in the last couple of years. I think the publication date is 2013. And here, too, we have similar stories that we find at Barut, like, uh, whoops, um, like basically the story of the six-tusked elephant, the Shadanta uh, Jataka. And here we have a very nice image of, uh, on, the, on the bottom panel of the hunters sawing off the elephant's tusks. Okay, a uh, very, very nice picture. And then we also have very common um, stories like the Vishwantara, or in Pali, Vesantara Jataka, um, in which the uh, prince, uh, Vishwantara, who's known as being very generous, almost uh, basically to an extreme, gives away the royal elephant, and then he's sent into exile, and also gives away his children um, to a uh, Brahmin ascetic. Okay. So um, the, the point uh, that I'd like to make here is that um, these uh, uh, labeled Jatakas, which are also found in Gandharan art, but Barut and Kanaganahali are kind of exceptions because the Jatakas are labeled, which is exceptional rather than the norm. Okay. Now, one more uh, uh, it, uh, Jataka I wanted to mention from uh, Kanaganahali um, is the story, uh, which is um, labeled as the uh, Jat, it, it basically you can't see the inscription very well down here, but it's basically saying the upper panel is the Jataka of the Rakshasa uh, Daka, or Daga, uh, which, which and basically what happens in this story is that, again, there's a uh, previous birth of the Buddha as uh, a king of the monkeys, or the leader of a monkey troop, and basically he's noticed that um, there are tracks leading down to this pool of water, um, but then there are no tracks leading away from the pool of water. So he tells his monkey followers to go not down to drink water from the pool with their mouths or hands, but to use straws to drink the water, and that's because the pond is inhabited by a rakshasa. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this uh, story we also find in the Mahavastu, uh, a Sanskrit Buddhist text, um, as well as in the Pali collection as the Nala Pana Jataka. Okay. Um, okay, so just uh, rather than going through all of the Indian Buddhist Jatakas, I just wanted to select a few examples, and I started to look for patterns of distribution of the uh, Buddhist Jatakas in Indian art uh, from sites where we don't have the kind of labels to, to, to indicate the Jatakas like we have at Barhut and Kanaganahali. And what I noticed was that, in many ways, the patterns of distribution are quite <laughs> uneven. Okay? So if you look at uh, Bodh Gaya, which is probably from around the same time as, um, as Barhut, 2nd century, 1st century BCE, we only have a couple of Jatakas, including the Jataka of the Sixth Tusk Elephant, um, and, uh, and in Sanchi too, we only have a few Jatakas, right? Some of those are quite familiar, right? I've shown you pictures of the Shadanta Jataka, uh, as well as the Vishwantara Jataka, and then we also have Jatakas such as those of Shyama and uh, Rishya Shringa, right? Uh, um, and as well as another Jataka about, you know, the leader of the great monkeys, the Mahakapi Jataka, in which a, a, a monkey bridges uh, a, a, a chasm. Uh, for his monkeys to follow him over his you know, body, the bridge of a body. Now, 
Um, what's interesting about the Bodh Gaya and Sanchi Jatakas is that, like in Sanchi, four of these five Jatakas are also depicted in Gandhara. Um, but it's really a limited number of Jatakas in Sanchi. Okay. Uh, basically, on the, um, uh, the, the, there are famous depictions of Jatakas there, especially the Vishwantara Jataka, on the, on, on the gateways uh, leading to the stupa. I think stupa, stupa. I can't remember which, it's stupa one or stupa two, I can't remember which, which one. Um, now, Mantara presents some um, interesting similarities and differences uh, from Gandhara. Uh, because uh, it includes very well-known ones like the Vishvantara Jataka and the Shivi Jataka, the gift of the flesh in order to save the dove. Um, it, but um, many of the Jatakas, like those that I showed you at the beginning of my presentation, like the Simhala, Avadana, um, uh, uh, and so forth, are, um, uh, are, are not found in Gandhara. So in terms of the number of identified Jatakas at Matura, and I'm still looking into this, I hope to go to the museum uh, there on Saturday to do some further investigations, <laughs> kind of represents a similar kind of distribute, a similar kind of pattern of, of just about a dozen or so Jatakas like we find in Gandhara, but they're not the same Jatakas. Okay. Now, another site that's, that's really exceptional in terms of uh, being a phenomenal a source for the study of Buddhist Jatakas in Indian art is Ajanta, where we have Jatakas from both the second century BCE, um, about seven of them, and I've only given you the highlighted, the bold ones that are common to Gandhara, as well as 40 Jatakas from the fifth century CE that have been extensively studied uh, by scholars like Dieter Schlingloff and Monica Zinn and so forth. Now, uh, what, um, now, what the work on these jatakas initiated uh, by scholars such as Alfred Fouché, who was a real fan of these jataka tales, Heinrich Luders, who uh, did a fantastic job of reading inscriptions both at Matura and at, um, and, and at Barhut, um, as well as contemporary scholars uh, like, uh, uh, like Schlingloff um, and Vidya Dehegia, who's book on the uh, discourse in Buddhist narrative art has been, is, it, it really emphasizes modes of narration. They, they still, they try to address uh, many questions about relations between narrative images and textual versions. Now these textual versions of these stories are transmitted in not only Pali literature, uh, but also Sanskrit and other languages, including Chinese and Tibetan. The, the depictions of rebirth narratives in Buddhist art reflect complex interplay between the oral, written, and visual repertoires. These illustrations presuppose the emergence of rebirth narratives in oral storytelling traditions, which were not necessarily replicated in the Pali, Sanskrit, and other versions. So the point I'm making here, more broadly, is that when both the composers of the textual versions, whether it is in ornate Sanskrit, like we find in uh, versions in the Avadana Shataka, uh, whether it's in the Pali Jataka collections, are, um, are, are other forms of anthologies, um, are other genres of Buddhist texts, especially the, the, the Vinaya monastic codes, um, they were in many ways confronted with similar but different challenges as the artists who were then trying to compose the same stories in terms of visual images. Some of these challenges had to do to the challenge of relating how you tell a story that moves through time in the form of a visual image. Those challenges are also there for composers of the, of the textual versions as well. Okay. So how did artisans, and scribes deal with these stories in Gandhara. I guess that's what I'd like to now turn to as the main focus of my uh, presentation. And what I've given you here is a list of Jataka narratives which have been identified in Gandharan Buddhist art. Okay, now as I mentioned earlier, hagiographical scenes from Shakyamuni Buddha's present lifetime, 
are far more commonly represented in Gandharan sculptures than his previous birth narratives. But about a dozen Jatakas have been identified, typically in secondary or subsidiary positions uh, on stupas, right, or on railings around stupas. So what I've done here is I've given you a couple of examples uh, of uh, basically the ones I've numbered, number five and six, uh, the Shyama Jataka, basically in which the uh, uh, son of two blind uh, 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 ascetics is basically shot by a king out hunting, and then the king tries to uh, repent, and the parents who are blind are able to revive their son. Um, and then also the Maitra Kanyaka Jataka. Uh, and notice how these are both in kind of subsidiary uh, positions of being stair risers uh, from sites, uh, from the site of Jamalgari, uh, which are now in the uh, British Museum, as well as another version of the Maitra Kanyaka Jataka. Basically the story concludes, he's, he's shipwrecked, so here you see the ship in the water. He goes to various cities where he's kind of waylaid by uh, uh, these you know, celestial nymphs, and eventually, uh, you know, he's entertained well with by musicians, and then he uh, uh, basically, when he goes to leave the city, he takes this burning wheel of fire um, uh, on his own head, and then miraculously rises to the heaven of the thirty-three gods. Um, so those, 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 those are some of the stories, but basically this is just to illustrate how they are in these kind of subsidiary uh, architectural positions. Um, the main two stories that I, that I highlighted here are the Dipankara Jataka, okay, which is to say not the Jataka about Dipankara, but the Jataka that takes place during the time of the previous Buddha, Dipankara, um, as well as the Vishwantara Jataka. These are kind of two bookends, I think, um, in the career of the Bodhisattva. But what I'll also be doing is I'll also be highlighting here in italics two jatakas uh, which um, our project uh, uh, proposes to identify that have not yet been identified in Gandharan art. And then I'll run through uh, some of the other jatakas really quickly, just like I did um, the Shyama and Maitra Kanyaka jataka. But I'm aware that I don't want to take too much time. So let me um, just make a few quick observations about the Dipankara Jataka in Gandharan Buddhist art. Um, so while the other uh, Jatakas belong to architectural contexts of stair risers and subsidiary panels, the Dipankara Jataka tends to be in much more prominent positions, uh, prefacing the narrative cycle of the present lifetime of Shakyamuni. Therefore, many scholars would consider it problematic to even consider uh, the Dipankara Jataka um, as a previous birth narrative, since it's so cle clearly linked uh, to Shakyamuni's lifestyle in the present. So basically the story is that a um, young uh, Brahmin who is known as Mega in the Mahavastu, Sumati in other Sanskrit versions, and in Pali as Sumedha, hears that the Buddha Dipankara um, basically, that's who's depicted in the center of all of these uh, reliefs, is coming to town and wants to honor him uh, with, uh, with gifts of flowers. So he approaches a, uh, a, a, a woman named Prakriti, at least in the Mahavastu version, who sells him some flowers, which then you see in some of the versions kind of cascading down around the previous Buddha Dipankara, and then in order, and this is really the, the distinctive sign of the Dipankara Jataka, in order so that the, the, the Dipankara Buddha doesn't walk through mud, the young Brahmin lays out his matted hair to act as kind of carpet or, uh, or, or surface for the Dipankara uh, Buddha to walk upon. And you see that over and over again. In fact, the vast majority of around 150 Gandharan sculptures, which are identified as Jatakas, <coughs> tend to illustrate this particular story, which again is um, it kind of a different, occurs in a different kind of position than the other Jatakas that are in Gandharan art. Okay. So now, um, for these two new identifications of Gandharan Jatakas, of uh, what can be called the Banara or monkey Jataka, as well as uh, the elephant or Hustin Jataka. Um, this, um, these, these identifications were uh, proposed um, based on a survey of Gandharan Jataka images in European archives 
uh, in Rome um, of the Museum Nazionale uh, of, of the Art Orientale um, by David John Gabor, and with the assistance of Monica Zinn. Because when we when he saw this image of monkeys drinking out of this well that looks like somebody in it, he, we asked um, our collaborators if anybody had seen a story like this, and somebody. Uh, and, and so our colleague Jesse Pons in Bochum pointed it out to Monica Zinn, who recognized it not only from Kanaganahali, but also from this cave painting uh, at uh, Kizil uh, in Kucha in Xinjiang in western China. And uh, there too, uh, just like at Kanaganahali, the face of the Rakshasa is depicted in the well with the monkeys uh, drinking straws from around it. And it's clear also that this is what's happening in the Gandharan uh, visual narrative as well. What's more difficult to explain, both at Kanaganahali and in Gandhara, is what's going on with this ascetic figure who the monkey seems to be, who the monkeys seem to be conversing with. Okay. So, in other words, uh, we know that this story is um, around uh, from uh, sources like uh, uh, the, the, the Mahabastu, the Mulasarvasti Vinaya, and Mulasarvasti Vada Vinaya, as well as from the Pali collection, is the Nala Panajataka, but none of these seem to preserve any kind of interaction with an ascetic figure, right, before the monkeys go down to the pond. So what's going on? We don't really know. It could be that we don't have the kind of literary version that the artisans had access to, or maybe they had access to a different kind of storytelling tradition. Similarly, um, for the Hustin Jataka, again, that's the story in which the young elephant who is raised by the ascetic uh, tries to knock down his hut and then ends up killing him, here kind of graphically illustrated. Um, but here too, what's going on with these ascetics that are, seem to be part of the narrative in, um, in, in, in the Gandharan panel from the Rome archives. It's not completely clear. So a lot of questions still, to, still remain to be answered. But what I think is interesting is how uh, the closer look at Gandharan Jataka narratives sheds light on Indian art, particularly the newly discovered uh, finds from Kanagana, newly excavated finds of Kanaganahali, and also to some extent on the Buddhist art of Central Asia as well. Okay, so. Um, other Gandharan uh, Jatakas um, are stories about the previous births of the Buddha as an animal. Here again we have the Migga Aruru Jataka. Again, that's again where, where the person is being saved from a flood by uh, uh, being carried on the back of the deer. Here you see the deer picture. Um, and uh, then we also have other uh, 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 stories like the uh, six-tusked elephant in Gandharan art, which we, which we see here, the tusks being sawed off. It's interesting in Gandhara because rather than six pairs of tusks, it's just a single pair of tusks, um, as well as the Rishya Shringa, are, you know, the one-horned Jataka. Um, and uh, this is um, a story in which uh, a sage, uh, Kashyapa um, is urinating, but his urine is mixed with semen, so when a deer comes to drink it, she becomes pregnant with his offspring, and that's who's depicted here, nursing from the deer, uh, who then the sage uh, Kashyapa raises like his own son. And uh, I showed, I, uh, I added this uh, seal, um, which is, uh, which Harry Falk published, uh, which shows this same scene of the Rishya Shringa Jataka, where the, uh, where, where the son, the one-horned, uh, or you could say uh, son is kind of like a um, uh, theriomorphic uh, figure with a single horn like an ant, like a unicorn, is nursing from the deer while the sage sits um, in, his, uh, in, in his hut. Okay. So um, in addition to those stories, um, we also have the story of the uh, Chandrakinara Jataka, okay? and um, this is uh, uh, in both British Museum uh, and from Lorian Tangai in the Indian Museum. Okay? And in this story, uh, what uh, basically did, uh, different, uh, it, it, there's a king who goes out on a hunting expedition 
He really likes uh, a kinari, uh, basically a kimnara is, is a kind of wet man, a kimnari is a wet woman. These are kind of like celestial figures, right? Who are neither, you know, divine nor human, but somewhere kind of in between. And they exist up in the mountains, playing their musical instruments and dancing around. And in order to get this kindari, this Chandra, uh, the king uh, basically shoots her husband. And so that's what's going on here, um, is that you see the husband lying down on the ground. And here you see a detail of, 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 of the uh, husband. And then the kindari, Chandra, is, Chandra is able to revive him. Um, and uh, that's, what's, uh, that's what's going on here in uh, this Janaka story. Um, okay, so we also have very well-known uh, Janaka's, like the Amara Devi episode, which I explained earlier from the image of Varun. <laughs> here, here, here you can see the uh, three heads in one basket, right? And um, then, uh, and then down here too, um, which is in a, uh, an image in a private collection. I noticed that the source of many of these images is um, Inkos, Gandharan art in Pakistan, and then that gives you also just how small these images are, six and a half inches, right? Pretty small uh, uh, pieces. Okay, so I'm not showing you the really colossal, nice standing sculptures. I'm showing you kind of the, the, the minor, or at least we might think of them as minor narratives, but they still played an important uh, uh, role in the religious life of Gandharan Buddhists. Okay, so in, there's also the, uh, the different versions of the Shivi Jataka, again, where the king um, uh, gives away a piece of his own flesh, here being weighed by an attendant figure. Here you see someone cutting off the flesh, and um, in order to save the life of the, uh, 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 of the dove or, or pigeon. Okay. Now some of these stories, um, like the uh, Shivi Jataka, as well as the Vyagri Jataka. The Vyagri Jataka is one in which the Bodhisattva or Mahasattva sacrifices his own body in order to feed uh, the tigress, that's why it's called Vyagri, and, 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 and her cubs, and um, are also depicted in petroglyphs, or rock drawings, from the upper Indus region of the northern areas of Pakistan. Um, so here in the Shivi Jataka, we see the king in his future birth as a Buddha, and notice the kind of flames coming out of the shoulders. Um, and basically, a, a, another part of it is basically saving, weighing the dove against the piece of his own flesh. And what's interesting about this <coughs> petroglyph at the site of Shatial is it's part of a larger uh, triptych, right, which includes a central Buddha on one side and then a kind of structure on the other side, and it's surrounded by uh, overlapping inscriptions in Kharoshthi, in Brahmi, as well as in uh, Sogdian, a Middle Iranian language. Um, so the point here is that um, these Gadaran sculptures um, uh, and, and rock drawings um, are uh, are, 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 are quite widespread in Gandhara and what's, what can be termed Greater Gandhara. And so here I've just shown you a map of where some of these petroglyphs are located at Shatial, uh, at Chilas, and at Tolpan across the river from, uh, from, Ch from Chilas. Okay. The last story I'll discuss is the story of uh, the, the Vishwantara or Visantara Jataka. Um, and uh, basically, this is depicted in uh, a sculpture uh, in the Peshawar Museum uh, from the site of Shere Balo, right? Which, which, uh, uh, Dr. which Professor Ree and, uh, and, 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 and Kurt Behrendt also discussed, right? And what I'm giving you here is uh, a summary of this story as it's translated by Timothy Lenz. Um, in a series of Purva Yoga stories in the British Library, Kuroshti Bracket 16, uh, 16 to 25. Okay. So as he translates, it actually begins not with the name of Visantara or Vishvantara, but with the name of Sudarshana. Okay? Um, so, uh, so that's why uh, basically the name changes, but the story is the same. Um, some, in some versions of the story from Central Asia, it's Sudarshana, other versions, Sudana, and so forth. So 
notice how this story begins. This should be done by way of an example. And then it gives a brief synopsis of the narrative content. Since the prince was a giver of all, he gave everything away. Uh, the great royal elephant was given to a Brahmin. So that's what you see here. This, the elephant, and then the, the donation is noted by pouring out water, right, from the pot. Okay? The carriage was abandoned by the prince. So the, 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 chair, the royal chariot. And the children were forsaken. Then Indra, king of the gods, arrived uh, and said in a verse, certainly this evil man eats by the food. And then notice how it ends. It just says expansion. That's say you are to expand the story in detail so that all should be done. Okay. So this um, story of the Buddha's birth, uh, Buddha's previous birth as Sudeshna, who gave everything away, um, is therefore it, it is depicted in Gandharan art and briefly summarized in this series of Gandhari previous birth stories. Like the Dipankara Jataka, the Vishvantara Jataka or Sudeshna Purva Yoga is a special case as the last human birth of the Bodhisattva before his rebirth as Siddhartha. Uh, the Vishvantara or Sudana Sudeshna Jataka is so generally widespread in South and Southeast Asia um, in both literature and art that it is not at all surprising to find it depicted in Gandhara also. Nor is it surprising that Chinese visitors um, attest that episodes in this narrative were localized in ancient Gandhara around Palusha, which Elizabeth Arrington proposes to identify with <laughs> Sherry Balol. Um, so the, the provenance of many Gandharan sculptures very close to the archaeological remains of the Buddhist monastery at Taktabahi, which was, uh, discussed, was, was discussed by Kurt Berendt uh, just before uh, lunch today. So previous lives of the Buddhists and Bodhisattvas identified with Gandharan shrines attracted Buddhist pilgrims, including Chinese travelers uh, who, uh, who came through the northwestern borderlands um, from the 5th to 7th centuries of the uh, CE. Descriptions of places associated with the Buddha's relics and previous lives in accounts of Fa Xian, Xuanzang, and uh, Songyang have aided in interpreting Gandharan Buddhist art and identifying archaeological sites of stupas and monasteries. Narratives depicted in Gandharan art that can be localized in specific shrines in Gandhara and neighboring regions based on their accounts, besides the Vishwantara Jataka, include the Dipankara Jataka, which is localized um, around uh, what's now modern Jalalabad, ancient Nagarahara, particularly around sites uh, such as Hada. Okay. Um, King Shibi's sacrifice of his uh, flesh, and uh, also there's another story of the sacrifice of his eyes, are associated with multiple sites in different regions, ranging from the Swat Valley uh, to the vicinity of the Upper Indus River, okay, Upper Indus River, and also in the outskirts of Taxila where the bodily offering of the tigress, the Vyagri Jataka, is also localized in uh, Fa Xian's account. So based on the reconstruction of Xuanzang's itinerary from ancient uh, Pushkalavati uh, to the Swat Valley, um, uh, Alfred Fouché located a stupa associated with the Shyama Jataka at the site of Periano Deri, north of Charsida. The narrative of the hermit, who was the antelope's son, the Rishya Shringa or Eka Shringa Jataka, may be linked with ruins uh, below the Shakot Pass, uh, connecting Gandhara with the Swat Valley. Now, although uh, many scholars, uh, 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 such as Alfred Fouché, Etienne Lamotte, and to a certain extent Gerard Fussmann, considered these pilgrimage accounts connecting narratives of the Buddha's previous lives to various shifting locations to be ahistorical imaginings, they quite clearly reflect Buddhist strategies uh, to establish geographical connections between the Gandharan region and, uh, uh, and, and um, Shakyamuni Buddha, Bodhisattvas, and prominent Buddhist figures belonging to various past figures. So localization of these rebirth narratives um, as well as the bodily and other relics, enhanced the importance of certain pilgrimage places and probably contributed to the formation of a regional Buddhist identity. Okay, so now what I'll do is very briefly uh, introduce uh, the, the recent discoveries of several Purushti manuscript collections. 
Um, I only have a few minutes left, so I'll just briefly point out that the collection I'll be focusing on is the British Library collection of 29 birch bark scrolls with 23, te 23 texts, which has a terminus post -quip, that's to say a date after which, sometime in the early decades of the first century CE. Now, other collections um, can be dated more securely in 140 CE based on a uh, dated uh, pot inscription in year 12, probably of the Kanishka era, um, and the Skoyen collection, which includes not only Kuroshti manuscript fragments, but also Sanskrit Brahmi fragments and even Bactrian <coughs> texts. Um, the Kuroshti fragments, though, belong to relatively early layers of the first to third century CE, and for the interest of this symposium, those fragments um, can be fairly clearly established to have come from caves in the Bamiyan region. Uh, from around this, in, in, in this period, that is to say from the 3rd century BC, 3rd century CE um, to say 7th century or so CE. And uh, finally we also have two more very important collections such as the Bajaur collection from the northwestern frontier province, now Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province of Pakistan, uh, which, is, which include 19 birch bark scrolls by 19, 18 different scribes which include very important Mahayana Sutras, or Proto-Mahayana Sutras, uh, that describe the pure land of Akshobhya, as well as the split collection, uh, which um, uh, has radiocarbon dates uh, surprisingly early in the first century BC, and also includes Mahayana texts like the Perfection of Wisdom, uh, like the uh, Perfection of Wisdom in 18,000 lines, the Ashta Sahasraka Prajnaparamita, which uh, pr Professor Ri uh, discussed in terms of its Chinese version translated by Lokakshima. Now what's significant about these early Buddhist manuscript collections is that before, say, 1994, when the British Library co uh, acquired this collection, our only uh, known text from this early uh, was a birch bark scroll of the Dharmapada found in Khotan. In, um, in, in the Tarim Basin of Western Central Asia. So there's really been um, a kind of explosion of our, of our corpus of Gandharan Buddhist <coughs> manuscripts, which calls for provisional assessments of relationships with the visual culture of Gandharan Buddhist art. Mm -hmm. So while selective appropriation of hybrid features is readily apparent in <coughs> Gandharan visual imagery, the extent to which the Gandharan Buddhist literary texts are culturally distant, are relatively close to Indian Buddhist literary traditions, varies significantly. So depending on the genre and style, Gandhari manuscripts exhibit various levels of originality, hybridity, innovation, or fidelity to Indian Buddhist parallels. So I'm not going to be able to talk about all the various genres of Buddhist <coughs> literature contained in these early texts, but I'd like to come back to the Purva Yogas and Avadanas. And here, what's, in, in this image of the uh, Purva Yoga text, what you can see is that the scribe who begins to write the Purva Yoga text in the remaining space on the front side of the scroll, known as the Repto, only starts to write after the primary text of the Dharmapada uh, is, is finished. Okay? And here, what I've done is I've highlighted the Sudashna Purva Yoga from a chart prepared by Timothy Lenz of uh, uh, Gandhari Havadanas and their themes. Um, and what you want to notice here is that um, basically these characters, such as Achyanta, uh, uh, Kaundinya, and um, Ananda, and so forth, are identified with characters in their uh, previous births in the Purva Yoga stories. Um, notice also that some of these stories include figures like sakas or shakas. These would correspond to Greek, uh, 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 Central Asian Scythians. Um, and uh, they seem to be concerned with the disappearance of the Dharma. Now, moving quickly, um, uh, you won't be able to see all this, but like they said, these uh, presentations will be posted online. And here what I'd just like to highlight is that another uh, series of Avadanas, now written by the same scribe um, on, on British Library Fragment 2, contains a story which refers to a character named Jihanaka. Jihanaka is known from his coins and inscriptions, including inscriptions found at Taxila, 
Um, and this actually has our reference to Gandhara. So the story was supposed to take place, Gandharadi in Gandhara. Uh, now, what I wanted to emphasize here is that um, the, um, uh, you know, almost 50 of these stories labeled as Abhadanas and Purviyogas in Kroshti manuscripts um, are, are, uh, are all written by two specialist scavenger scribes as original compositions uh, in a very brief summary format, which was probably to be used as memory aids for either written or oral expansion. I'm working on the series of Abadanas in British Library Fragments 12 plus 14, and here what we see, we have stories labeled as Abadanas of Punika, uh, this would be Pali Puna in Sanskrit Pornika, uh, and Serpadasa, that's to say the servant of a snake. These kind of characters are known from Pali hagiographical traditions. But we also have local stories that are set in Pushkalavati, uh, the Pokaladika Avadana. And we have and we have other stories about the son of a king Kardamaka, who is known as uh, one of the rulers of the Western Kshatrapas, who is reborn as a pig because of his stinginess. So we have so these are great stories too. We're still struggling to understand many of these stories though because they don't have direct parallels with other Buddhist literary sources. So uh, uh, what seems to have been happening is in some cases, the motifs, uh, the narrative events, and so forth were not necessarily picked up in the transmission of Buddhist literature outside of Gandhara. Okay, so, um, and then finally, we also have stories uh, in a longer series of 16 or 17 Abadanas, which, is, uh, being, which are being edited by Timothy Lenz, written by a different scribe in a more slanty kind of hand in British Library Fragment 4, including the story which I highlighted that takes place at Sankashya in northern India, which refers to a <coughs> dispute between the Nirgrantas and the Buddhists uh, over claims to a monastery, and basically the, it all ends with a kind of pillar bursting into flames, which we don't have in necessarily Buddhist literary text, but is referred to in the pilgrimage account of Fa Xin as taking place there in Sankashya. Okay, so yeah, so now I'll just um, offer some brief conclusions. Um, and uh, what's surprising about these stories in terms of our uh, symposium here today is the almost complete absence of them in Gandharan Buddhist art. Only the Vishwantara Jataka is, uh, overlaps between the manuscript fragments uh, labeled as Abhadanas and Purviyogas and the corpus of Gandharan visual imagery of Jatakas. This suggests divergent lines of development in rebirth narratives in Gandharan literary and visual cultures since Gandhari scrolls and Gandharan sculptures reflect separate previous birth narratives. Now, um, I won't speculate about what led to these differences. Maybe we can do that in the question and answer period. But what I'd like to emphasize is that the employment of various media to transmit the Buddhist teachings in written and visual forms provide valuable perspectives on the regional literary and material cultures of Gandhara during the early centuries CE. The view of Gandharan Buddhism from looking at sculptures, coins, inscriptions, and archaeological finds does not necessarily contradict, yet does not perfectly align with the early Buddhist manuscript fragments. The effort to integrate literary narratives of Avadanas and Purviyogas in Gandharan manuscripts with visual narratives of Jatakas in Gandharan art in order to develop a more comprehensive understanding of the significance of rebirth narratives in Gandharan Buddhism probably raises more questions than straightforward conclusions. Uneven and irregular patterns of transmission provide great scope for understanding distinctively Gandharan modifications and transformations of Buddhist narratives through processes of transculturation. Locative tendencies in Gandharan Buddhist texts and art went hand in hand with institutional consolidation and expansion in the northwestern borderlands of South Asia. The recontextualization of different rebirth stories in separate written and visual media in the Gandharan testing ground honed strategies that were adopted for further translocations of Buddhist narratives across Asia. Thank you.
take off the question. Um, I was very intrigued by how few uh, Jatikas that were in the early period uh, that being used in the early phase of the Jata in the only seven. And, and then you said, is this on? Yeah. Um, so, in terms of the uh, Jatikas in the early period, the site that we're mostly familiar with for its profusion of early Jatikas is, is Barham, right? In Barham, there, there is a profusion of Jatikas, second century BC, first century BC, so forth. But that seems to be the exception, right? right. And um, I, and, and I guess my point of showing that there are, there are discrepancies in the number of Jatikas depicted in Sanchi and in Barham is to show that different sacred complexes um, decided or decided not to um, uh, pick up on the But a place like Sanchi, there's so much sculpture, are they just doing the same gesture as over again? Or? Well, like at, at Sanchi, for example, I mean, it's a little bit misleading because the depiction of the Vishwantara Jataka there uh, occupies uh, a tremendous uh, narrative program on the Torina gateway sculpture. So even though there aren't many, uh, many other Jatakas there, the depiction of the Vishwantara Jataka is uh, quite spectacular. Just like in the Ajanta K10, you have one Jataka over four walls. And, 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 yeah, that's right. So is it, a different, is it a kind of different way of treating narrative? In the early phase, you're getting much more at a period where people perhaps don't know the Jataka because you have to explain them in full? That's always puzzled me, actually, with Barthes, is why are they blatant, right? Um, perhaps, I, I don't think it's a matter of you know, the monks or the Buddhist visitors not knowing the Jatakas, but it may have something to do with Barthes' location uh, on, a, on, on, a, on a transit route. So perhaps uh, the labels were considered necessary, but this raises another interesting issue about literacy in, the, in ancient mm -hmm. India, because it would seem to show that actually lots of people perhaps could read Brahmi, right? Um, so I think for most visitors to these sites, um, they, they would know the story already. They would have heard it, right? They would have heard it told to them, right? Whenever they were, uh, uh, you know, visiting these stupas. And kind of, I think the narrative program in terms of its architectural arrangement, whether it was, um, whether these were scenes from the hagiography of Shakyamuni Buddha around the drama of the stupa, or whether these were, whether these jatakas were elsewhere, like on railing pillars, like we see in Barhoods or elsewhere, those would have been part of the experience of visiting a site. Um, and the, the basically, even today, when you go to Buddhist uh, temples, uh, like in Thailand and so forth, there will be monks there, and they will be explaining. They'll tell the stories. And they'll tell the stories. And they'll say, look, it's here in the text, which I'm telling you, and there, you can look at the picture, because that's what's happening. So I think it was uh, a part of a you know, visual and auditory experience. But the point I'm trying to make here is that there was also a literary experience of, of reading these Jatakas, Abadanas, and Porbiyokas, which we begin to see emerging in the Gandharan Buddhist manuscripts in this very fragmentary summary form that then uh, it, it represents an early form because before they kind of become fixed in these uh, later collections of, of the Questions? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
are other kinds of abbreviation formulas. Like this is to be expanded according to the model, right? So obviously, um, if how these texts actually function uh, is a kind of open <coughs> question. Um, presumably, um, it, these uh, could have been like notes for a lecture, okay? um, for months to look at before they go out and making their rounds and telling these stories. Um, or it could have been part of a monastic training uh, for a specialist scribe. How many stories do you know? Uh, write them all down. And, uh, and, and kind of like cues for, uh, to, to, to use in that way. So I don't, we don't really have a clear answer. My collaborator, Timothy Lentz, points out that there are notations at the bottom of some of these stories that, uh, let's say, Lahidigo are it's basically like, you know, from, from, from Hindi lit method, right? Mm -hmm. Thus, so, so it has been written. It's almost like, I'm done, it's completed, uh, right? You know, we do have other kinds of uh, summary stories like this, um, not only in canonical uh, video texts, uh, but also now in another uh, anthology, which was uh, written in Brahmi and in, in kind of Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit from the site of Mer in Turkmenistan. And that's recently been published uh, by Seishi Karashima and a Russian scholar, Gorobyov and Dostovskaya. Uh, so that presents kind of the closest kind of parallel that, that we've been able to notice with the Gandhari summary stories. Mm -hmm. Because, but they oftentimes will give actually a verse, right? Whereas the Gandhari summaries don't well, usually give the verses. But it, it is an interesting question for me, right? <coughs> because the regionally distinctive summary stories are not necessarily those which are depicted in yeah. the locally produced Jataka mm -hmm. images. We, you would expect perhaps, that there would be more of a link between the yeah. text and the art. Yeah. I think you've really just got the wrong, <coughs> the wrong place for the, 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 the bark, the birch, that they don't have to wait for. Oh, <laughs> no. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, mean, I mean, they're in the language of Gandhara, and the script of Gandhara, of Gandhara. I mean, they, they're, they're, they're probably from there. Right. Uh, we just don't know exactly where, except for the Scullian uh, fragments, right. which, have some have actually the more common job. But I guess the point I'm making is that um, what we see in Gandharan art, right, is a process of transculturation, right, where in terms of the visual motifs, we can see these exogenous, uh, heterogeneous patterns. Um, we see the same transculturation in the adoption of these local figures from the historical and cultural context of Gandhara, which are contemporary with the composition of these stories. So it's quite, quite interesting that the way, the way that's done by artisans and by writers is, uh, is very different. So, yes, uh, I, I'm always wondering about the, the functional differences narratives and visual narratives, what really textual narratives are. And uh, the in East Asia text has a great authority because uh, you know the things can be found in the text. But in India the, there are many parallel versions of stories. So I wonder what textual narratives are. And at the same time, I, I, I'm wondering it's a it's just my simple minded Observations from. Uh, I'm wondering whether the probably the, the selection of some jatakas or localizations of the jatakas <coughs> should be. I have to be related to the, the fact that Buddha really didn't come to you know, to the northwest, so they had to justify you know, some some oh, sacred so uh, connections. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time. I'm wondering whether the, you know, the, the, in the selection of Jatakas, I had the wrong perception. Perhaps in Gandhara they had the, you know, the, the Jatakas where the Bodhisattvas were humans rather than just animals. Mm. Uh, but I could be wrong. But uh, compared with India, we have many animal Jatakas, but uh, 
But, but, but because in, in China, they, they always have the representative and the favorite judge, human judge, not animal judge. So that struck me. So I wonder if you can correct me. And then thirdly, I'd like to ask you, you know, the Chinese pilgrims singled out all great judges in the Northwest, as you might remember. The Vishwanta, Shivi, and the one is Tigress of the feeding the star Tigress. And the, I don't remember what, that one is uh, something, cutting the leaves of the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so that, the set of four Jatakas became very important in East Asia, as I said. But uh, we, we find we have a Vishwantara Jataka and the Shivi Jataka. We don't have any Tigress, any of probably in India. But the other one, the other one is also very famous. So, for, you know, I wonder if that the Chinese just bought the conception from China, or they were just offering something in the now. Yeah, those are, those are very, you know, good, good points. Um, the, the first point, especially, I think, is very important that um, the localization of Jatakas um, in Gandhara allowed. Buddhists there to establish a connection, not with the present life story of Shakyamuni Buddha, but rather with his previous life stories. Um, and so in other words, this is kind of a pattern that's been noticed by scholars like John Strong, is that Abhidhanas and Jatakas allow you to do things that you can't do with the life story of uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. Now, there were apocryphal versions of uh, the journey of the Buddha to the Northwest um, in the Mumas of um, and, and those are noted also by the, by the Chinese visitors when they come and associate local shrines with that, with that journey that the Buddha undertakes with uh, Vajrapani. Um, now, as far as the human versus animal rebirth, I think the Jatakas were kind of just like in India, a mixture that we find in, in, in Gandhara too. So we do find um, previous births to say the six tusk elephant, the golden deer, and, and so forth. Uh, yes, yes. Besides Jataka and the Guru, what other thing were Jatakas are there? Jataka and Guru are so famous Jatakas. Right, yeah, they're, 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 they're pretty, I mean, they're pretty widespread, I think. But, but I think you're, you're right that actually it's those other four, right? So they there. might have, you know, somewhat uncomfortable with the yeah. animal. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, it, 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 you know, maybe that, that would be an important question to ask as we continue to start our survey. Because, because just because we find one or two images of, say, the Muru Jataka doesn't necessarily mean it was that widespread, right? It, it, because basically it was those other ones, like Dipankara, and the Vishwantara Jataka that are the most widespread. And their localization seems to correspond with their provenance, with their, with their pattern of provenance, too. So I'm getting the, I have to stop talking. Come to the geographics, I don't mind having his head cut off. <laughs> Thanks very much, Jason. After tea, we have uh, Vizira uh, on, um, uh, aren't you? What next? Yes. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have a lecture? You lecture. Good. <laughs> After tea time. Yeah. So a 15 minute tea break please. <laughs>